Hello, my name is Mike Rayner and I'm with eWrench.com. This video is a guide on dual booting a Windows Server 2008 R2 with Ubuntu Server 12.04. Now I will have to say a caveat here because all my previous videos demonstrate a live host or guest virtual machine going through all the steps. This video is only a guide. It uses a Windows Server 2008 R2 guest to install Ubuntu Server 12.04 for a dual boot system. Working out the issues you might encounter using guest computers is an excellent problem solving technique before going on to the actual hardware install. This video demonstrates with a guest computer, not the actual dual boot system that I set up on my laptop. I would have to do several retakes and doing this on a hardware machine gets kind of uh, difficult sometimes because you're going to have to put it back into a previous state. And one thing you have to keep in mind is that your hardware may de be different or software installed on your computer may not work exactly as this video demonstrates. So this might be a, a wise thing to practice using a guest computer, virtual computer, before advancing to an actual hardware install. Uh, three things you have to do before starting. Uh, one, back up everything. Two, back up everything. Three, back up everything. And I know everyone's heard this before, but it, it's something that you really have to do. And one thing I do want to point out is, although no operating systems were harmed in the making of this video, including, including the ones on my laptop, there is no guarantee that following steps presented will produce the same results. It's just one thing using the virtual machines and then it, everything worked out as far as my laptop cons was concerned, which was an HP system. Now, the decision you have to make is which bootloader. The MBR master boot record of your hard drive contains a snippet of code that points to which bootloader, Windows or Grub, is going to control your dual boot system. And you're going to see a screen like this, and it's going to ask if you want to install the Grub bootloader to the master boot record. Now, it's your decision which bootloader to use, Windows or Grub, my recommendation is decide which operating system you will be using most and use a bootloader for that operating system. This video will be using the Grub bootloader, which will change the MBR automatically with Ubuntu Server 12.04 from the installed disk. If you want to use a Windows bootloader, here's a link to pick up the most popular free Windows bootloader editor, HTTP NeoSmart.net EasyBCD. Another decision that you're going to have to decide is which partition method. For dual boot system, basically you're going to have to choose between guided, use the largest continuous free space, or manual. Now if you use a guided, Ubuntu storage can be set up using guided use the largest continuous free space option on the Ubuntu install CD. This is what this video demonstrates. Windows Server 2008 R2's disk manager was used to shrink a disk volume and then delete a partition. As long as Ubuntu can declare two primary partitions, the Ubuntu server install CD can get the job done. Now if you choose manual, basically what you have to do is before using the Ubuntu install CD, use gparted from Ubuntu Live CD or your own boot CD to partition the hard drive. You set up your own boot operating system, home and swap partitions, or however you want to do it. Ubuntu recommends that the boot partition use the ext4 file system. This is not shown on the video, but there are plenty of recommendations on the internet. So the outcomes are use a Windows Server 2008 R2 disk manager to shrink your hard drive to give storage room for dual booting, and then use Windows disk manager to delete a primary partition so you have a minimum of two primary partitions. Install Ubuntu Server 12.04 with a Grub bootloader controlling the boot options. Finally, verify that the Windows Server and Ubuntu Server both work. Requirements for this video are Windows Server 2008 R2 installed first, not shown. Ensure you have enough spare primary partitions available on your hard drive to install Ubuntu Server 12.04, basically a minimum of two, and enough disk storage to run both Windows Server R2 and Ubuntu Server 12.04. And you, of course you're going to need an Ubuntu Server 12.04 install CD. Additional info, you've got some from Ubuntu and then I found another, there's some other information all over the net, but 
here's two that I just picked that I found handy. Disclaimer, too many things can go wrong. So this is only a guide that gives a demonstration of how a dual boot virtual machine works. Let's get on with the demonstration. This video is not the actual installation of a dual boot system, but it's actually more of a guide to show you how I manage it for my HP laptop. In this case, I'm using a virtual box virtual machine with Windows 2008 R2 installed. To boot into the Windows Server 2008 R2, you can't really use Control Alt Delete, which you have to do because it's virtual box. You come down here and in the right corner you see what your host host key is. In this case it's right control. Hit control and delete and that should get you there. Put in your password. And once you're started, we'll take a look at our uh, storage settings. To get our to our storage settings, simply click on the server manager icon, or you may have to go to start if you're not you don't have it set down here in a taskbar. And wait for the server manager to uh, come up. Once the server manager is up, we want to choose disk management. In this case. This is kind of how it looks like on my HP laptop, but keep in mind that this, I'm just guiding you kind of through this, and this is an actual virtual machine here. Once disk management is up, one thing you have to realize is that you can have four primary partitions and a number of extended partitions. But in order to install Ubuntu server, I'm going to need two primary partitions. Now, if you look here, I've got three p primary partitions, Sift system reserved, the actual C drive and the recovery and then this HP tools here uh, this is is a uh, extended partition and what I'm going to have to do is make sure I have at least two primary partitions or space available for two primary partitions so with three so I've got to remove one of these so essentially what I'm going to do is back this up I'm not going to show you the backup you, you can manage that but I'm going to remove this, delete the volume because it's already backed up, and of course it's going to erase all data on it. Now actually where I'm going to install Ubuntu Server is right here on C, but what I'm going to do is shrink the volume and you're going to have to decide how much space, depending on how much space your hard drive has and you're going to have to actually decide you know how much to allot for a Windows Server and Ubuntu Server. This guide here is a representative of my laptop. I did keep the HP tools because I'm told that the HP tools is necess may be necessary for a uh, BIOS uh, update so I want to keep that on my laptop and it is a FAT32 partition on my laptop but like I say this is only a guide I'm trying to show you a guide on a on a virtual machine because you have to do too many takes to try and get it correct you don't have to wait a while for this querying volume it might take a few minutes it will take a few minutes once the querying is stopped you're going to have to decide how much space that you actually want to allocate to Ubuntu server and how much space you want to allocate to the Windows server that's going to be, Windows Server is going to at least need at least 25 gigabytes. So let's go here. I'm just going to allocate, uh, I'm going to allocate 40,000 megabytes or 40 gigabytes to Ubuntu and then the rest to Windows Server. And of course, before you do this, the one thing you want to make sure is you've got everything backed up. So let's go ahead and shrink. Of course, this is going to take a minute or two the shrinking may have to move some files around. Now that we've got the C drive where, where the uh, Windows Server is actually installed the operating system down to 43.74 gigabytes we can kind of leave that alone and you'll notice that the unallocated space right here has shrunk to about the f we took about 40 gigabytes of shrunk shrinkage and then whatever else was there. Now we're not going to do anything else here. If you want to set up your Ubuntu server in a certain way, I would suggest that what you do is take an Ubuntu Live CD 
with G parted or your own live CD or your own bootable CD with G parted on it and go in here and set this up however you want this unallocated space however you want it to. For example, you might want to set up 500 megabytes for the grub bootloader, a certain amount for your home directory, and a certain amount for uh, your uh, you know Ubuntu install and then of course you've got to have your swap space dependent on the amount of RAM you have so gonna leave this here basically shut this down and the next uh, part of the video will be to the actual Ubuntu install one thing I do want to point out here before I leave is that we've got space here there's two primary partitions we have the two primary partitions that's uh, necessary for the Ubuntu server installed this to install automatically. As this is a guide in doing a dual boot install of Windows 2008 R2 and Ubuntu server, I'm using VirtualBox Virtual Machine. You'll probably be using different hardware. Basically I tested everything out using the Virtual Machine before I actually switched over to hardware. So the one thing you're going to have to do before you start is make sure your CD or Ubuntu CD or DVD is in your disk drive. In this case I've got to go to here with the system. Make sure it will boot before the hard disk will boot. If you're working with a hardware machine you're going to have to make sure that it, you go into BIOS. You're going to have to go into BIOS and do that. And the other thing I'm going to have to do here is uh, go where storage is and make sure that I'm choosing host drive E. Click OK. Then we're going to start this start. Ubuntu CD starts or DVD starts. In this case I'm going to choose English. You pick your own language. And I'm not going to go over all uh, how to install Ubuntu server. I'm just going to choose a few important screens and then you know you can take it from there. In that case I just chose a default install. This is keyboarding 101. Detecting network interface. In this case I'm going to allow it to just proceed with TH CP. Now one area right here is it asks you if you want to encrypt your home directory. Now I'm going to say no. As far as the virtual machine with virtual boxes, that's not a problem, but it was a problem on my HP laptop when I clicked yes, so I had to change that. Just heads up on that. It may or may not work depending on your hardware. Now Here's where you're going to have to make a decision. If you've set up, you know, with your own separate partitions, 500 megabytes for the boot partition in your home uh, space, okay, you you can go ahead and that may show up, uh, or it should show up here. If not, you're going to have to go and play around. In this case, I'm going to use guided, the largest continuous free space, which if you Recall, this is what we set up on a Win Server 2008 R2. So that's the choice. As long as I have two primary partitions available for Ubuntu, it will do everything automatically for me. And we're going to. It says partition six, ext4, and partition seven as a swap, and that's what will show up. HTT proxy will just hit enter, leave it blank for now. That's your choice, however you want to set up your server. Now you got a choice on what you want to install. In my case I'm just going to install SSH and leave everything else uh, blank, but it's it's your choice. And but you can always come back and install it later using task select. Here the grub bootloader is being installed. Now you're going to have to make a decision here whether you want the grub bootloader be default or the uh, Windows bootloader. And in this case I'm going to click yes. 
it's your choice. If you want to click no, then you're going to have to go back and uh, use the easy BCD and alter the Windows bootloader. So finally, everything's installed. After I hit continue, we should shut down. And when we start back up, we should have our choice of going into Ubuntu server or Windows server. And there's our choice. You get your pick. Once Ubuntu server has been installed, you come up with a screen like this. And Ubuntu will start without click hitting anything. But you can actually go to Windows server, and which we'll do in here in a minute. So I'm going to select Ubuntu installation. We're going to make sure that everything installs, that it works. Here's your login screen, Ubuntu. We'll log in. So as I stated, this is a, a guided install using virtual machines. And here we are. We can update and everything else. So we know that Ubuntu is working. I'm going to simply power off this machine and then verify that Windows working is working. Power off. Actually, I should have done a re reboot. Here we add our menu again. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to choose Windows Server 2008. Bring that up. Go to Start. And actually, well, actually, what we need to do is go to the Server Manager. Go to Disk Management. Here we have what's actually showing. And we've got two. This is what Ubuntu did during the install. We've got a 54 healthy primary partition, another 1.97 healthy primary partition. Now this is your swap space, and the natural install just put the grub bootloader right in here with the rest of the files. So that's how. So that's a dual boot, uh, actually a dual boot guide for Windows Server 2008 R2 and Ubuntu Server 12.04. Everything seems to be working now. You're going to have to, uh, you know, reconfigure your machines however uh, you want. Of course, one thing that uh, if you do what I did is practice with a virtual machine before actually moving to the hardware machine, you probably need to erase your virtual machine, uh, your Win Server 2008 R2 server uh, virtual machine, because of licensing restrictions. Uh, as far as Ubuntu is concerned, it doesn't really matter. Thank you and I hope uh, this has been informative for you.